I like to think, you know, throughout the years, Gallows have kept their integrity. Do you know what I mean? Like we've never, we've never pandered to, to like mainstream music. It's been like this all-encompassing kind of monster thing for the last few years. It's been well documented in the past that this band has always had anything but a, like a stable uh, kind of existence. The thing about heavy music is just this like ultimate release. I think that release changes over time, you know? Like cathartic, crazy experience where it's just like the show's done and I'm just like, I'm done. Yeah, it's really difficult getting uh, all t getting us all together nowadays. You know, um, half the band are married and have jobs outside of the band. Whereas before, for the last kind of ten years, it's coming up to you next year. Next year is going to be Orchestra Wall's ten year anniversary, which is scary. Before that, obviously, the band was everyone's main like full time job. You know, and uh, that, with that not being the case anymore, yeah, it's, of course it's difficult. But we always find a way. You know, the music. Is, is what brings us together. We've never gone out deliberately to, to write a hit song or even when we had the opportunity with Warner Brothers to like, had all that money, had all that backing to like, you know, come up with something simple and straight, which, which I guess the masses would be into. For me now, when we get back together, it's, uh, it's fun. Again, it's like super fun. It's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a hobby because it's not, it's still a job for me as well, but like, it's more fun when we're together. You know, no, we've only got that certain amount of time with each other. Um, I think we make more of the opportunities that we're given now than we used to. You know, I think before it was like, oh, do we have to go and do that? And instead now, if something's given to us, like an, an opportunity, we'll, we'll take it. It's like, it's like, if television is a day aside, it's basically what it is. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> That's what that mean it. <laughs> song makes you think of it. See, if Blur went on, <laughs> if Blur went on tour with Turmoil, Blur, 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 That's exactly it. What's your take on this one? Photo, photo of us playing yesterday. At blah blah blah, photo of us playing. Gallows, killing it. Yeah. Retweet. What's your take on that? Stay. Yes, it's a simple no. Yes or no. Basic fans shouldn't need the love of other people to know what they're At doing. At a level, I definitely agree. Like At your level. But I think yeah. they're starting to. Right? Yeah, I doubt Metallica retweet every time someone says, oh. I think uh, we do everything very much day by day, you know? And like, get at the studio in the morning and and try and be as creative and open to everything as I possibly can and do the best kind of work we can do and I think that's a day by day thing you know let's just fucking do it there's like that that's the chorus yeah the thing the bit like the super sabbathy that's like pre-chorus or like yeah. maybe the second half of the verse When you go on stage, it's it's almost becoming someone else. Like I'm a pretty chilled out, fun guy most of the time. But as soon as you know, I, I get that guitar on me and the crowd are there, it's, I just switch. And you know, it's, it's aggressive music. It's it's dark, and I think that's that's probably why I'm such a easygoing, fun chap outside of a band. Because basically. You know, the band lets me release those demons. You're getting a lot of play out of that new guitar I bought you, too. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> so, uh... You could say yeah. that me smashing your guitar at a writing festival, probably the best thing that's ever happened to you. It did, yeah. So, so I lent Wade my guitar at Leeds Festival, it was, and, yeah, it got smashed. 
got thrown into the crowd. Let, can I? <laughs> may I yeah. put my side of the story? <laughs> I come over to Lags. It's really loud, obviously, on the stage. Pretty loud band. I say to him, hey, I'm going to smash this guitar. In my mind, Lag says, yeah, no problem. He probably says, what? <laughs> then I smash the guitar. We almost get into a fist fight on stage. Have to end the show early. Um, but then, I buy him a new guitar. And I use him a new there record. Is. There you go. I, I like, don't like to think we're like one of the UK punk band greats because, you know, to me, I, I don't see that. You know, I don't think we are. I don't even class us as a punk band, to be honest. You know, we just we just do what we do, and it just so happens that a lot of people latched onto it and took it to heart. Most of the music I've always loved the most was made in this country, um, and it wasn't the like you know, first wave of New York punk or hardcore stuff that I really liked. It was it was the Clash and the Pistols and the Damned and and all those bands and. In a in a weird way, it's it's cool that I can have something to do with that lineage. So for me, it's I don't know, it's an honor. I mean, Gallows is I've seen the the world, which I probably wouldn't have before. I probably would have been stuck in some office job or joined the army or something like that. <laughs> Fuck your granddad and your mum. I don't think I'll ever play in another band like Gallows ever again. It's, it's, it's like a, a beast that takes over you. It sounds really cheesy, but it really is. So it's it's completely yeah, completely changed my life and saved me from a life of the typical kind of Watford existence, which I would say is you know you finish school, college, or whatever, and you, you get a job, and it's any job that you can find because there aren't many around kind of live your life that way, you know, it's, it's allowed me anyway to kind of carve out my own, my own path. I had no idea what to expect. We just kept driving out into the country. Deeper and deeper, more woods. I thought, oh my God, we're passing fucking Stonehenge. Where are we going? Further and further, we got here. And all you fucking nutcases. When you haven't played a gig for about 10 months, it's, it's pretty hard and, you know, how, how do I do this? How do I prepare for playing gigs? Like, how, how does it, how does the show go? Like, you really, you really do forget all about it, but, um, you know, as soon as you start playing the first, the first song, hit the first chord, it all comes back to you and that energy comes back. Yeah, having waited so long to play, I think uh, some of the urgency had come back to the shows. I don't know, it's good to not burn yourself out on that feeling, you know, to come out and be really, to be really hungry and, and ready to do it. And I think uh, coming back and making this record and, and playing shows again, you know, it's all, it's full blast ahead. It's exciting to play that Brighton show, you know, it had been, the, yeah, like you say, 10 months, I think, since the last gig at Reading and Leeds, and we'd been in the studio since then, writing some new stuff and recording, so it's good good to play some new stuff, and, and just tread the boards again, you know, and play live, it's, uh, it's good fun. I felt really rusty, to be fair, uh, 10 months is a long time without playing, uh, especially when you're a drummer, 
and yeah, I was rusty, but it was good to get back up there, definitely. Um, yeah, like, as I said, 10 months is just too long to not be playing, especially with a band like Gallows, who are used to being on tour quite a lot and playing real kind of, you know, chaotic shows and then being just suddenly thrust back into it was a bit of a bit of a shock to the system. I think uh, playing club shows is great because, um, you know, people get up on stage, sing along, stage dive, and uh, you can't really recreate that feeling ever, you know. it's When a show's really kicking off and it's on that, that edge of getting too out of control, there's nothing really like that. Don't go punching. Disco. The revenge of disco right here. It was weird. Hyde Park was uh, was almost like a club show. Like we did two gigs there, and uh, the first one was was the acoustic stage, which was pretty random. The sound was terrible, but again, it was like it was really packed, and the kids were going nuts. So it felt like a club show, and and same with the the second tent we did at Hyde Park. It was. It was small, it was cosy, it was rammed, and uh, it was awesome. I had a really good time. I don't want you to think... I don't want you to think we've been fucking around, wasting time. But playing the festival, especially High Park, uh, with so many iconic bands that we have grown up listening to, and I mean, a show that's... Black Sabbath and Motorhead, it really doesn't get any better than that. So coming off the Brighton show and it being so chaotic and, and crazy, um, I think the High Park show went amazing. I think it was just, uh, it went perfect really. For us, the show was really messy and out of control and uh, everything again the show should be. Festival's good because you get a chance to play to people that wouldn't necessarily just go to a gallows gig. I'm sure there were a ton of people at Black Sabbath who had no idea who we were, you know, whether they're older people, and if they you know, walked past the tent and heard us and, and got into it, then it's actually cool. It's a different feeling, this whole massive collective of people that are on the same, that are doing the same thing. So having a, you know, a huge group of people all like clapping their hands or singing along, um, there's something really powerful about that too. It's always been a grind to you know, on with Gallows. When we go, we play hard, we put everything into it when, when we do play our songs and you know, we're not getting any younger and it can certainly take its toll, years of jumping around like an idiot and uh, stage diving and all the rest of it. So yeah, we feel it a lot more in the morning than we used to, but not bad enough for us to want to just stay home. On the way down, after the gig, I spend like half an hour just like doing that. Well, warm down. Yeah, it's a good idea. And it really helped actually. Do you remember in the old days, man? I used to fucking carry deep heat around. That shit used to help. It used to, but I used to stink of deep heat everywhere we went. Oh, like. yeah. But. It's, uh, the thing about heavy music is just this like ultimate release. And, and I think that release changes over time, you know? Um, to like the pressures in your life, what's going on. can't do anything else for the next 24 hours. And uh, it's cool, it's like a really, I don't know, playing these shows is a really powerful experience. And, and um, I don't know, there's much more thought. That's going to be a song that we're going to write. That's going to be a Gallows song. We are in Titan Studios in Watford, where we've been holed up for the last kind of eight days or something. Yeah, less than that. Not even a week. A week or so, yeah. Just uh, recording our new record. Um, it's a great studio that our, our long time producer, friend, collaborator, and partner in crime, Steve Sears, now owns. I think it's awesome because we got to work on the last record so like, we know how to piss each other off and not piss each other off. 
and uh, it's awesome. It's wicked. Everyone knows what they're doing. Like every, every, everyone's done it all before, you know. So it's really. I think that's cool. The fact that we work together before makes it. You know, I think like we trust each other. If, if, if I've got a stupid suggestion about something, they will either get shot down or we'll go with it. We know which one, what one to do now. You know, there's no like tiptoeing around or any of that. You know, it's hard a lot of times turning over ideas to a producer because you're going to be worried about what he's going to do to him. But he really feels like another member of the band, and we really trust him. So uh, yeah, it's pretty seamless. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been on tour with Steve a few times because he's playing a band called Cry for Silence, and back in the more metalcore days, I like, go on tour doing merch. So he's actually one of the funniest people I know, and uh, and Stu's pretty funny. Album four is coming along pretty well. It's getting there slowly but surely. But um, you know, we're writing, we're writing like songs now. Um, I feel like throughout Gallo's career, there used to be a lot of cut and paste riffs going on. We're kind of we're working hard to make sure the parts sound good, all the structures are there. Because I think that's the worst part. Is you know when you go into it knowing you've got only a certain amount of time as you just rush things. So we're still trying to take our time over the tracks. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't picture what you're doing. The first note of the shoot, right? Yeah, it's good. You know, the first album was... very little thought went to the songwriting there. Like, I literally just showed the guys the riffs and that was it, do you know what I mean? We just... We never really thought about like which verse fits into which chorus and all that. That progression, I'd love to almost do like a muted part, like uh, it sounds like it sounds like sham or something like the progression. We're going back and forth on a lot of the tracks and uh, and hopefully, I mean, it's going to be all worthwhile. But we're pretty happy with what we've got so far. Well, recording the fourth album, I think you know if you go back and listen to. The first three full lengths where, you know, Orchestra Walls, Great Britain and Self-Titled, they're all, uh, to me they all sound like gallows, but there's definite, they're all really different sounding records. And I think that's something that we don't necessarily like, aim for. We just write the songs that we want to hear. But as you know, we go on tour for three years on the record, you know, and our records never straight one after the other. We always take time. It's probably the quickest we've gone back in the studio after releasing an album, to be honest. And I think when you've got a longer time to write, like we had with Great Britain, there was just a tendency to overthink every single part of every single song. And I think that happened with that album, with us definitely. You know, like we had probably two or three months to write it. And I wouldn't say the actual songwriting on that album is any better than the songwriting we're doing now. So like, I think we, I think we do thrive under the pressure of having more constraints on time, I would say. I think about 2% of what's going to make the record was stuff that was actually written beforehand. It's all happened in this room this week and um, there is that kind of sense of urgency to it and not trying to make everything like super perfect. It's been a really different recording process from last time. Um, we just approached it differently. We came in here and just said we'll see what happens and what's happened is we've made an entire record in a week. Yeah, the like the content of stuff that's getting written is, is mad, like you know, I guess there's never any pressure to do a record right, but I think uh, it's pretty mental how many songs have just come together really quickly. Yeah. So yeah, that's like the first the first and the three chorus of the song. Yeah. Well, do you turn that into maybe like a maybe a second three chorus you can do the third chorus you want? It's different because everyone's got their own ideas obviously, so you're kind of, uh, there's a lot of pitching riffs and pitching choruses and pitching verses and uh, and you know that's that's how it should be, it's a band isn't it, it's, uh, you're a team, you're, you're working together to get the best results so so it's completely different to that first record where it was simply a case of presenting the music and that's it so 
You know, it's different, it's, it's harder, but uh, in the long term it's going to be more rewarding. Lyrics are always the thing that, that mean the most to me about other music. You know, the, the musicians I love the most put a lot of pride and care into that. And uh, so it's something I, I really, really kind of pine over and take my time with and I'm constantly revising, you know. Uh, but I don't know, it should, doesn't need to be easy. right now, yeah, we're loving life and it's definitely what I would consider to be a record that mostly shows like our influences. I think with Gallows in the past we've you know totally tried so hard to be a regional and not really like wear any of our influences on our sleeves, which is what kind of always what we've always been this one of those bands that you can't really place in a is it a metal band, is it a punk band, is it a hardcore band, is it just an indie band that's a bit noisy, what is it? Gallows never really had any long-term plans to begin with. Um, you know, like when we did the first record, like Frank actually left the band before we even hit the studio. So we were in the studio recording the album and having different singers come in and try it. And uh, do you know, I think that's that's pretty much how Gallows was and always has been. You literally, you know, you don't know what's going to happen next and. Uh, I've always said like, you know, like like Gallows gigs are completely unpredictable and you know, the same with our future. Like I don't think we really thought about doing another album this year until I got all the guys over to uh, to Watford in February and I was like, look, we could probably crack out an album, you know. And we did. Recorded a few demos, recorded chains and wrist slitter and uh, and yeah, everyone was like on board. So do you know what I mean? Like who knows who knows what we're doing next year?